Okay, hello everybody. Welcome to the Five Under Five panel. Very excited to have all of you guys here. Uh, my name is Jacob Sheets, and I'm a realtor with EXP Realty, and I'll be hosting and moderating for the panel. Um, yeah, woo! Yes, it's okay to have energy. It's okay. It's, good. Uh, it's like, okay, guys, cocktail hour is one hour. Uh, anyway. Like I said, my name is uh, Jacob Sheets. I'm very excited to be bringing this to you guys. The goal of this panel, so there's five individuals here, all with very different backgrounds, and the goal is not to say, these guys are the perfect all-star realtors, do everything they did, success, success, no, no. It's just they, in the first five years of their business, have done really well at you know, one, two, or three really specific things. Okay, so we're gonna go through, hear their story a little bit, give them both, or each about like three minutes, tell their actual story because it's gonna be more about taking away from their background and taking away with, you know, one thing that Brian might say, you might not care at all about. And then Grace Kelly goes up and you're like, oh yeah, that's gonna change my business completely. So we'll be able to get those perspectives um, and then we'll get started over here. Oh, uh, we're gonna be leaving about the last 15 minutes or so for a Q and A. So if you do have pen and paper or whatever, you feel free to write down something to ask at the end. There's expectation for that. If you have a super short question, feel free to just raise your hand after I just kind of bounce the questions off of them, um, as long as it's not like a real long, dragged out one, just as a follow-up, like they have one specific thing, how they did Instagram reels, or their door-to-door -door marketing campaign, and you just want to put like, whoa, whoa, explain that a little deeper before we get lost in the shuffle, feel free to just raise your hand, and I'll just make sure on track to hit the Q&A at the end. Okay, uh, so a little bit about me. Um, that is my beautiful wife up on the corner. Uh, we've been married for about six years. Her name is Rosie. I grew up in Cedarburg, Wisconsin, and moved over to University of Wisconsin Whitewater, where I studied there, and then jumped into real estate investing, and then getting into real estate sales afterwards. Um, the bottom corner there, I'm also super involved with the uh, community. The last eight years, I've been teaching the marching band as well. Started with teaching drumline, things like that. I'm a huge band nerd. So, if you come up after and try to talk sports, I will probably walk away. But, uh, if you talk band, marching band, or drum corps, or anything like that, that is where I light up. You'll see even my social media as well, which if you guys take out your phones, if you want, you can take, this is one thing you could be implementing to your business right now. This is called a link tree. You can scan it on your phone, and if you go to it as well, you can actually hit create a link tree. It's literally completely free, and you can put any links there. So every single one of my social media is there, Facebook, uh, YouTube, uh, Instagram, and all my other, like my direct link to my website, all that, completely for free, and it tracks everything. So you can see like, oh, where did they click? What, how long did they stay there? So feel free, and if you do actually want to use that to get connected with me, feel free to do that too. Um, yeah, so I've been in the business for about three years after starting investing with my wife, got our first owner occupied duplex, and I'm moving back to Cedarburg at the second owner-occupied duplex um, with the big goal and the big why that pushes me forward. Uh, my one nugget, because it's not going to be a whole lot for me anymore. I mean, it's going to be me and this whole panel in the next minute or so, um, was having a really big why to push me to get out of you know, bed every morning, to have big goals and a dream, sometimes to hit those goals, sometimes not. But for me, it's to reach over for the National Association of Realtors 30 Under 30. So I've applied for that the past two years, and my next big goal is to continue to work towards that until I either get it or turn 30. <laughs> <laughs> uh, yeah, that is uh, enough about me. I have the rest, uh, at least real estate-wise, involvement with the GMARYPN with the Events Committee. We uh, host that in the Milwaukee area. So if you're a Milwaukee area realtor, we host one event every single month. Feel free to get connected on that. Uh, and the rest is just real estate jargon that you all know anyway. So, um, getting connected for our first individual, we have Brian Stearns with EXP. Uh, he is a phenomenal agent that really busted his butt the very first year. And one of the big things that I noticed about him is his big shift of being busy just to be busy and get deals done versus actually spending the end of his year to break down his numbers. Was I profitable? Did I make money? Where could I do better? Uh, so with that, I will let him introduce himself now. All right, so as Jacob here said, uh, Brian Stearns, I got into real estate about two and a half years ago, so end of 2019. Um, I'm with EXP Realty and a solo agent. Um, 
bringing on a couple buyer's agents at the time, but that's really one of the goals that I'm looking to do over the next, the next span of time is build up that team, pour into others uh, the valuable resources that I think I've developed over the couple years here in the skill sets. Um, but outside of real estate, um, before I got into real estate, I was doing professional timber sports, so traveling the country with the steel pro team, um, was doing speed climb, uh, the chainsaw axe uh, events, that sort of stuff, and really had a competitive spirit to me. Um, but a career ending injury when I broke my back doing that speed climb there uh, caused me to settle down and try and re pivot and get into a new industry. So uh, at that time, that's when I dove headfirst into real estate. I read Rich Dad Poor Dad when I was 16 years old and kind of cued into investing in assets, um, build a business rather than work, trading time for money. And I started off similar to Jacob with a house hack, bought a duplex with an FHA loan. While I was going through that, uh, rehabbing both sides of the property, I was able to purchase a five unit apartment building as well and started posting on social media about what I was doing with that. Wasn't licensed at that point, but had about 30 or 40 friends that had reached out just asking how to purchase properties and ended up connecting with the agents, looking back at the end of that and saying, hey, I could make a living off of this rather than just passing these two agents that I've worked with for deals. Um, and so that was really how I got started in real estate. That's my family, the reason why I am out here working hard. My daughter, who's five years old, Adeline, and my wife, we just went out to Glacier National Park about a month ago, so newly wed, um, and had an awesome time out there. But uh, yeah, really, the goals that I'm looking forward to getting into are gonna be uh, doubling my production um, that I'm consistently doing right now. I'm doing about seven million in volume a year and looking to really get up to like that 14, 15 million without necessarily increasing my transaction volume. I'm looking to increase that dollar uh, or volume of um, the price per unit. I'm getting into higher quality properties, vacation properties, um, commercial properties, and I uh, have a particular interest in uh, multifamily real estate. And so I sold that fiveplex and duplex about a year and a half ago now, and I uh, have been just kind of sitting on that cash and really looking to deploy that into something larger. So I've, I've been brainstorming with a couple business partners and we're in the process of putting together a syndication. I've been connecting with some other syndicators that are doing it on a high level and looking to get into that space where I'm purchasing 20, 40, 100 units at a time and uh, sharing that with those that are in that sphere of influence. So that's a little bit about me. Ooh, yeah. that's and up next, we have Grace Kelly Diaz, and she's awesome, seriously, incredible. Uh, we know each other all the way back from before real estate, we were working in banking together, uh, and she is a phenomenal individual that also runs her own um, uh, flooring business as well with her husband. Uh, just really, uh, not just, of course she does a lot of deals, but character-wise, it's just through the roof. I would trust her with just about any one of my deals, my transactions, my friends, family, really is just an incredible person. So with that being said, Grace uh, Kelly. Thank you, Jim, yeah. for the kind introduction. Yes, so Grace Kelly Diaz Peñaranda, I'm originally from Venezuela, South America, and I've been in Wisconsin for 25 years. This is my home. Um, I come from a very warm, warm country, but I do love living here. Um, uh, this country has been very kind to me, and I respected that from the minute I moved to the U.S. I knew I needed to adapt, learn the language, and continue to learn. I was in banking for many years, um, and helping clients, understanding the banking, how the credit system, how the finances um, work in the U.S. was huge for me. Coming as a new person into the country, I bought my first home two years into the country. I did not have a cell phone, I did not have a, a car, but I, I wanted to invest. And with a little bit of being naive and ignorant about what to invest, I'm like, I don't know anything about the stock market. I'm just gonna buy a home, I'm not gonna pay rent. So many years in banking, my husband and I created a flooring business. Uh, he has a lot of construction uh, um, experience. Eight years ago, uh, and in 2020, I said, you know, I've been leading this financial institution for a long time. I understand what my community needs about their finances. I wanna help on another level. How can I help? Doing loans? No, I don't do any of those. So I translated for mortgages for my clients all the time. And I understood that especially my community needed a lot of empowerment in their finances. 
and understanding how to build credit, how to understand how the system works in this country and kind of work for them to be ahead and leave something for their family, I wanted to help. And everything that I have done in this country for me is with the heart of serving people. If that entails into a profit, then I'm there. Um, I know all of us are in this room wanting to increase and increase and increase the value that you offer to other people, but my intentions every day is that whoever I'm meeting, I want them to be better, not only spiritually, but in their finances for them and for their family. And that explored in 2020 for me and my business. I wasn't waiting for awards. Of course, I was looking at the numbers. I needed to pay gas, and I'm blessed that I have another business that supports my finances, but I wanted to empower other people. And um, my kids just bought their first home. They're 21 and 23. I have a lot of young people buying their first home based on my experience, helping them understand, yes, you do want your dream home, but think about it as an investment. If I didn't have that investment for 15 years, I wouldn't have money saved for my kids to go to college. So that's my whole approach. And I'm here to share my experience, how I run my business. And at the end of the year, when I look at the numbers, that intention that I want to be the best, helping them, and I want them to have knowledge, translate into numbers. So. Mm -hmm. <laughs> but uh, she actually, in the matter of literally like two years in business, started a team with two agents right now, which you guys want to raise your hands? Yes. Yep, right there. Um, but yeah, they're fantastic, and I just wanted to point that out, because she, of course, didn't bring up even that. So, uh, but okay, yeah, up next, uh, we have Elisa and Gina Morales. These guys are just energy. They are power pack. Uh, if you really want to connect with them on social media, they are the examples of, of how to do it. Like really, their key point, we talked, we had lunch with all these guys beforehand, and they got pretty much all of their business, that's you know 120 plus closed lifetime deals, or transactions, families health, whatever, just basically through social media. Uh, very approachable, uh, both of the content, but very educational, and on top of that, working just crazy, crazy hard. So uh, go ahead and introduce yourself. How's it going, Wisconsin? What's up? Yeah. Yeah, that's good. That's good. I, I had to start with some energy because, guys, it's all about energy, right? My name is Gino Morales. I have been in the industry for three years. I'm going to say four years now. Uh, my first year in the business, I was behind the scenes of this beautiful ladies' uh, business. Um, prior to real estate, I owned uh, two multimedia businesses. I did everything from marketing, social media, content creation for small businesses, restaurants, and I was also a DJ entertainer. So, um, yeah, that's funny. There's, I, didn't, I didn't want to put any pictures on there. So, um, and I also did like a lot of video work for uh, weddings, uh, cinema, you know, cinema work, and things like that. So that um, all those skills. Um, kind of helped me, or helped her in her business her first year. Um, so that's a little bit of like my background. Um, at the end of the day, you know, we, I'm, I'm one of those people that, um, you know, energy is power, uh, your vibe attracts your tribe, and at the end of the day, we're all a magnet, right? We are gonna attract the business, the people that wanna work with us, and that's kind of, that's kind of how, uh, you know, I kind of move with my business. But uh, I let my wife kind of talk and kind of take it over from here. <laughs> she does everything. She's awesome. <laughs> so he's definitely the loud one in the uh, stage. In person, though, I'm like a social butterfly, though. <laughs> but um, yeah, so we're a husband and wife team. Uh, I started in industry first, like you said. Uh, my name is Sonorita, by the way. Um, and, uh, you know, our first year, like we, you know, when we started out, we just really didn't know anything. We were 24 years old, and, uh, you know, the industry was kind of not as welcoming, you know, to like younger people in the industry, but, um, you know, but, like we really just kind of used what we knew, which in this case was his social media strategies, and, you know, be before that I was actually in property management for seven years, um, I was just doing more like their applications, and I remember I applied for their sales job three times, and they denied me because they said they did not think that I could sell. So, um, someone actually, they were, they were wrong. <laughs> so um, they give the position to someone else, the last position that I applied to, and then that person actually backed out and they were like, well, if you still want the position, it's yours. So I took the position, I became their number one uh, sales and property management, so the most amount of units in the whole company. Let's go. <laughs> that first year. And 
and my husband here, he's like, you know, he's, he's even though I was a top producing person, they, I, I didn't feel like I was being valued because, um, you know, it was kind of like, what is she doing? She's coming in and she's taking over, you know, the company. And uh, he was like, you know, he's like, I see how passionate you are about this. Have you thought about getting into real estate? And my parents actually, um, I moved here from Mexico when I was 11. And um, my mom married um, my stepfather, and he had a few properties, but then they started investing into more properties. So I grew up, you know, painting houses and uh, helping them, you know, get units ready for, you know, their rentals and stuff like that. Um, so he was like, you know, have you thought about getting into real estate? And, you know, I took a leap of faith, and, uh, you know, for in first year, you know, I closed 12 units on my own, just with social media. And I was like, you know, um, why don't we, I was like, if I can do that much on my own, and that's without any systems, without any CRMs. What if we were to just partner up and become just like a power team? Uh, so we did that, and um, we're here now. So Chief Horace going to give out ice and say, we're here now. Let's go. <laughs> <laughs> One thing I wanted to point out on that screen there, they are huge into kickboxing, jujitsu, all these martial arts. So like all, almost all the time, because of course I like all their social media stuff, it pops back up at me. You'll see them just like going at it and going like sparring, and like you don't, you really don't know which one is winning. <laughs> I was going to say you don't want to be at, at home and the, the deal falls through. You do not want to get her mad. <laughs> Okay, uh, well, with that being said, uh, our final panelist, Jenna Meza, um, from Brookfield with U Realty Group and Big Block Realty, uh, her story is fantastic for especially new realtors that are just like either struggling or like feeling like they're at a plateau because her first year came in and just had, what was two transactions, right? Two transactions and came in and then joined a team. There's there's no like one secret sauce for every agent. Everyone's gonna be different. Some might be fantastic as individuals, some as team members, some as team leaders. And she is just killing it as a team member over at the U Realty Group with Big Black Realty. I'll let her give all the details and her personal story, but uh, yeah, just go ahead and welcome Jenna. Thank you. Thank you. Yeah, so I actually uh, really tried not to be a realtor. Uh, my dad got his license when I was three months old and in real estate, and as a result, I grew up with a dad who was very present, but all the time, you know, 5 p.m. dinner, we sit down, the phone rings. It was like clockwork, and I tried everything in my power. I was like, you know what, I'm not gonna be an agent. So I did musical theater, I moved to New York, I was there for six years, I did acting out there, absolutely loved it. Also, <laughs> I joked earlier, if there's a, a world that kind of, you need to have thick skin for, it's acting. So nothing that a, a client, other realtor, anyone can say I haven't heard before, right? You know, <laughs> the acting world, not the front list. So moved, moved back from New York, grabbed my husband from New York, brought him with me. Uh, we had our daughter, got married, and here I am now in real estate, my first year in the business. Um, I did a whopping two transactions. Thank you very much, hope they fly. <laughs> and you know, the problem was that my broker at the time, not the broker I'm with now, had said, oh, well, you have a one-year-old and you're pregnant with your second and you just need to be home and the, you'll figure out the deals. And I thought, that is such crap. I need, <laughs> yes, I need to be home. Yes, I need to be with my kids. Yes, all, all of that is true, but I, do need to be producing. This is how I provide for my family, and I need to be in a place that's going to encourage production um, accordingly. So now, the team I'm at now, um, it's just completely made my my business just soar um, in ways I am very thankful for. Um, yeah, so that's me. I'm in Brookfield. Like you, I'm kind of the energy person. Um, so <laughs> That's how I try to win, win people over, first and foremost, when I first meet them, is just energy, intention, and smiles and good times, right? Yeah. Woo! Uh, Jenna also did mention that her husband was the first person that when moving from New York to Brookfield, that went and saw the fields and went, 
Wow. <laughs> so that, that's another side note for you. Um, okay, so we'll go ahead and open up to some questions, general questions. Uh, again, as a reminder, if you have a short follow-up, you can feel free to raise your hand, and I'll uh, call on you guys to get plugged in. And you guys can uh, answer however you'd like and just share the mics. So the first one that we have, uh, we, you guys each mentioned a little bit of what makes your business different or what's successful, but if there's one thing that you are doing right now that is making a huge difference in your business, or like the staple, the core that you just do really well, and you'd want to share that with everyone else here, what would that one thing be? Regardless of they're, they've been in the business for 20 years, or they're just literally brand new, what would that be? For me personally, it's staying connected. So no matter how um, busy I could be, I want to be available for my clients, I want to answer their questions, um, I understand the, especially with first time home buyers, how um, the transaction could be very difficult um, and they could be nervous and I wanna avoid all of that. Anything that I can do to be proactive, to help them to ease um, you know, their time in this transaction, I want to do. I stay disciplined, even though it's, it's hard sometimes, you know, you get a phone call from a friend and you know, you want to be a good friend, even though you're running to, I'm running to businesses, but um, I want to stay present and everything that I do, I want to be there for, for my clients. So that's why I brought Victor and Jennifer with me, great people in our community too, to help me um, continue to grow this. I would say um, testing and like being flexible within your business. Uh, there's especially when you first get started i mean we're getting calls for a bunch of different stuff all the time but be willing to entertain a new idea that may be different from how you're currently doing things uh, I, I was presented a couple different uh, solutions that i was at first no this doesn't fit into my business plan but then after reevaluating it i looked at it i implemented it and it was a source then for a, a lot of transactions that came um, specifically different types of mailing packets and uh, pre-listing packets that I'm sending out to listing consultations, sending out to expireds ahead of time. At first, I had tabled those ideas, said no, no, no. Finally, I entertained the idea and it's gotten very positive feedback. So um, I would say be flexible in what you're doing, be open to new ideas and consistently be testing new ideas even if, if you're in the business six months or if you've been in the business 30 years. Oh, you're good? Okay. I, I really like that one, so I was waiting to see how long and how many answers we get there. <laughs> Great. Uh, so, the second question would be, so there is, I know in my real estate business, the first couple of months I was suffering from <coughs> tiny object syndrome. I know many of you have suffered from that, or you guys have. Um, do you have any examples of a time that you suffered from shiny object syndrome, either how you overcame it, or you know how you stay away from shiny object syndrome and stay focused on whether it be income producing activity, uh, advancing yourself, <coughs> whatever it is, or building your brand, what is it uh, that's kept you from shiny object syndrome? Um, I want to say that for me, it all goes back to our, our beliefs. Like one of my beliefs is that you know, we are getting this business to do something big, right? And in my in my case, it's like I get I got into business to be able to provide for my family, be able to you know set you know create a financial freedom, whatever that looks like for us. I want to be able to travel, spend time with my kids, uh, create memories, right? So instead of focusing on all the new shiny things that are coming our way, a hundred miles per hour, right? Why, you know, just focus on and ask yourself, what things in my business do I have to do every single day to ensure that I'm reaching that big why, that big goal of my business? And it, it all ties back, back, it all ties back to your belief, right? So your belief of uh, whatever financial freedom is to you. If, it, if it's focusing on prospecting two hours every day, you better make sure that you, you spend two hours every day to prospect. Uh, right, so it's income producing activities. So just tie it back to whatever that big core why is in your business. Okay. <laughs> I'll go. Um, also, you know, you test out enough shiny objects and you realize 
it's not all that shiny. So, <laughs> um, yeah, I've definitely fallen for some and um, have had success with others. So, yeah, I want to follow up actually, Jenna, with you. What was it that, that clicked or changed in you? Obviously, you have a team support, but like, what mentally changed in you going from one or two deals to this, you know, 26 or whatever you're at now? Like, what, what changed in you, whether it's your mindset, attitude, your behaviors, what was it? Um, well, the big shift um, was just with the team, you know, we do generate a lot of leads, which means that I'm able to fail more and have more hot off the presses opportunities with ready, set to go buyers or sellers. And you only, you literally can only learn by doing. And you know, my first year I was a little anxious to pick up the phone and just to get started and you don't want to mess up. And now I've messed up more times than I probably succeeded. And I've learned a lot from that. So that, you know, just having the ability to, to fail and learn from it over and over and over again and keep going. I just kind of wanted to add to that. I think, you know, sometimes when you talk about shiny objects, I think it can be, yeah, it can be like material things, you know, the Louis Vuitton, the Gucci, the Mercedes, whatever. <laughs> but um, I think it also kind of falls into a lot of like, everybody's looking for that secret, secret sauce, like that secret pill. It's kind of like losing weight. Like one pill is not going to get you to lose weight. You need dieting, you need exercise. It's a, it's a mental game. So uh, same thing in real estate. You know, sometimes you go to some of these conventions, and it's great that they have so many resources. But you also have to keep in mind what kind of like what Gino said. What's your big goal? You know, because they can say, hey, this thing is going to do this for you. That's going to do this for you. And that's one thing that I feel like him and I have been really good at working together. Whereas the best thing about working as a husband and wife because. Um, he's a CS behavior, if you guys are familiar with behaviors. So he analyzes, he dissects, he's not just gonna pull a trigger on something. I'm like DI, so I'm just like, what are you waiting for? Like, this is a easy peasy, set done, where do I sign? Um, of course, you know, I do think about things eventually, but, um, you know, but it is a good combination, yeah, because, you know, I can say, hey, you know, this seems like it might be a great deal, and then he will like dissect it, and he's like, well, this is why this may not work, or maybe we can find a different way of doing this without necessarily having to maybe spend that much on this system, or finding something that's gonna do the same thing or more um, at a much better deal. So kind of keeping that in mind in your business so that you're not just kind of you know going for, like you said, the shiny, like shiny thing. Nice. I wanted to add that, um, it's a lot of work. I know a lot of people see our posts and they reach out to us. Um, oh, you guys are having a lot of success, but they don't see us driving at 10 p.m., um, getting a meal where <coughs> you promise you're not gonna get a meal, but you're hungry and you cannot make it to your home and cook something, so it's a lot of work. You can come to these conventions, you can learn a lot, you can learn, but if you're not willing to get up in the morning and be self-disciplined, it's not gonna happen. So. Just a lot of reset every day of what you want to reach and the reasons why and, and work for it. personally, inside, mentally, whatever is your biggest obstacle and how you tangibly overcame it. Not just like a, you know, I, I, I changed one thing, like what was the tangible thing you did to change or overcome that obstacle? For me, it was to face my ego. I was in, <laughs> in banking for a long time and I knew everything, compliance, all the answer to my employees, and here I am, all of these contracts, I'm like, yes, I passed the test, but oh my God, what, I, what do I do here? So who do I talk to? Oh my God, they're gonna think I'm doing it. And all of that emotional, you know, psychological that goes through your mind and to the point that I'm like, okay, you have to be humble, this is something new, and people are gonna find out you're new about it. But all of the passion and all of the intentions to learn, nobody could take that away from me. But that was just overcoming, like understanding me and getting over that ego that you don't have to know it all, you just have to learn. And I had a good friend um, that year that was, uh, 
he wasn't even my sponsor in the business or anything like that, but he was very available for difficult questions or, you know, I didn't want to be out of compliance and a contract and anything like that. So um, I think it was just overcome my own mentality knowing that I did not, you know, at all. Being in banking for a long time, I was just, you know, happily there answering everybody's questions, so. I would say for uh, for me personally, uh, I think it was more kind of finding that work-life balance because I feel like when we get into the industry, we get so caught up into leads, 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 deals, 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 and it's like you get to a point where you just burn out, you know. And that was one thing that I feel like early on in, in the when we first started, we didn't know kind of like how to balance that, so we gained a lot of weight, um, and we just found ourselves, you know, eating unhealthy, and it's like, you can only sustain that for so long, you know? So one of the things that we did is, you know, we got into um, kickboxing, um, and uh, our industry is tough, so let me tell you, if I need to go release some stress, the gym is the best place to release some stress. Um, so, you know, we started, um, you know, working out, um, through that, I actually learned that everything that I put in my body actually affects it. So um, I've been pretty much a vegetarian, vegan for the past two years. Um, I've learned how to balance you know, my meals, how to eat healthy, um, all of that, and also um, just build that gym time into my schedule. Um, same thing with like, you know, building in family time, because it's like, what good does it do for you to have all of this money if your family's never gonna see you? Um, or same thing, like I said, back to health. Health is wealth, you know? Like what good does all this money, does all these, you know, Louis Vuitton bags, the um, houses, the cars, what good is that if you're not healthy yourself? How long are you gonna last? So it's like, at the end of the day, it's like, you know, for us, like we wanna build a legacy for our kids. We don't wanna be those parents that, you know, we have kids and then they see us just being gone all the time. Yeah, we wanna be able to build that financial freedom to be present for our kids to attend every single, you know, games or whatever it is, uh, and travel with them, you know? So um, that that was, I guess, for us, our biggest kind of like break. I, I want to add to that too, because something big that she left out was that, like, like she said, health is wealth, and something that we really started implementing was uh, breathing exercises. Um, we, uh, she purchased a course, um, which I think is another question too, and I think, um, which uh, it, it helps us, one part of our morning routine is to you know set ourselves up, you know fill our cup up first before we start to serve others. Um, so for me, one of my frustrations is overthinking. Um, how, how many of you guys overthink? Like you guys know, like you have to do something in your business. You know you have to call. You know you have to make the call. You know you have to be on social media and you just overthink it. Who 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 does that? Yeah. I was, I was I was one of those people. Like I overthought everything, and like she said, I'm a CS behavior type. So that means that part of my uh, overthinking is me letting go, um, delegating. I I hate seeing other people do my job, right? Because I'm, I'm overthinking. I'm saying, what if they don't do it my way? Or what, what, what you know? What if this you know goes south? Or so overthinking was one of my uh, my, my big frustrations, and. Um, <clears throat> It wasn't until we started hiring our, uh, our ISA and uh, virtual assistant TCs and everything like that, that it, it started to really uh, open up. Uh, and, and our business actually started skyrocketing from there because we, we were able to grow our team from, uh, for, I think it was like 30% uh, since last year uh, in production. Um, so that, I wouldn't have been able to do that if I wasn't you know, delegating, so delegating. And Gina, real quick. What is an example of those tasks that get taken off the plate when you hire someone else? Like, what is the transaction coordinator? Because some people may have never worked with one and do everything all by themselves. What does the transaction coordinator do for you or your admin or your agents or whoever? What does that provide for you? Everything everything that you guys, most of the time, those realtors hate doing, having to input listings or, uh, you know, upload contracts, uh, paperwork, upload contracts to our amazing software where so our amazing broker can look at, you know, look over it. Um, scheduling, uh, you know, buyer consultations, uh, connecting uh, clients with lenders. There's a list of different things that, you know, if you, you know, you start to delegate and all that stuff, and if you really dial in on what is, you know, how much you're worth per hour, you will be surprised with how many different things you have to do in your business. Um, and, and just hiring a, a BA, a TC, will help solve 
most of those different things. So you can just focus on serving the client um, and just delivering a, a golden experience. For us, is, is you know, how can we uh, systemize the whole sales process, the whole lead generation process, so we can just be out there with our clients, showing them properties, and get to the closing table. And how much does something like that cost? Um, you'd be surprised. You know, right, right now, uh, depends if you hire, you know, if you outsource out, uh, out, out of the country, you can get some, someone as low as $4 an hour, you can bonus them, uh, five, seven, you know, $7 an hour, 14 if you wanna hire local. Um, so it all depends on, on the strategy that you want to go about it, but if you go the VA virtual side of things, you can get someone for as low as 4 or $5 an hour. Super short follow-up. Is it worth it? Yes. 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 Well, it is. If, you know, I just saw a video the other day where they, they were talking about the same thing. Let's say even if you had someone local, let's say your, your value per hour, let's say it's $2,000, and it's going to cost you $15, $18 to hire somebody to do the work that's going to take you an hour to do the paperwork. Uh, you know, we're big on social media, but social media is very consuming too. You know, like there is a lot. I overthink them. Now maybe I don't know where but when it comes to social media, I overthink because he's such a perfectionist. Um, but if let's say your value per hour is two thousand dollars and you're paying somebody eighteen dollars to do that job, would you rather make the eighteen dollars or the two thousand dollars? So delegate, big time. Cool. Anything else? One more? Yeah, go ahead. Um, the, well, the question was a struggle that we're facing, right? Yeah, our biggest obstacle. Kind yeah. of rabbit trail there, but right. yeah. <laughs> yeah, no, I mean, all, I agree with everything um, so far, but like everyone in this room, I imagine time management can be pretty difficult. That is my number one thing to work on. Um, as you all know, I have a three-year-old and a one-and-a-half-year-old, um, and sometimes my husband is the one who needs the most attention. Um, <laughs> But I am um, almost halfway through the 75 card challenge, if you all are familiar with that. Mm -hmm. And in this, what, 35-ish days that I'm into it, um, it, it's, it is a time management challenge. I encourage you to look that up. Um, if you're unfamiliar, it's called 75 hard, five tasks you have to complete every day. Um, I can go through them if anyone's curious, but uh, the main bulk is you have to read 10 pages of nonfiction every day. You have to drink a gallon of water every day. You have to take a progress picture every day. You have to work out twice a day, every day, for 45 minutes each time. One of them has to be outside. And I think I'm missing one, but maybe I'm not. But I mean, and if you, if I'm able to schedule myself to work out twice a day for 45 minutes a day, what I found in my business is I'm able to give my client a very specific amount of time and not a, a minute or two past that time. Um, and so that's helped my time management um, to a degree. Now, of course, if something comes in, I'm available and all that fun stuff, blah, blah, blah. But you have my attention for 45 minutes and it's focused and then I have to go and do my next task. And I think that's helped me train my clients um, to be respectful of my time and they typically are um, actually produces better clients in the long run when you set the expectations as I've learned the hard way to do that. Thank you, Jenna. Um, so I'm going to shift gears here a little bit and do a little bit of a speed round. So each one of us will go down and say one thing or one tool that you use in your business every single day that someone in here doesn't have, doesn't use an app a system or whatever, just say what it is and what that one tiny benefit is so that we can get through a couple rounds here of it real quick without a lot of elaboration. My first one that comes to my mind, and if you are taking notes or anything, this would probably be a good time, is Calendly. And what that does, I connected it into my link tree, it's connected directly to my Google Calendar, and I just, anytime someone wants to book anything, I send them my Calendly. It completely frees up my life. I guess the one resource that uh, comes to mind would be my CRM. Um, the first brokerage I was at, it was pulling teeth and pulling my hair out working with the CRM. It was terrible, it didn't have a lot of technology incorporated. Um, but since switching over, I use a system called KB Corp, and it allows for uh, text message integration, email campaigns, um, I can have social media posts that have uh, smart links 
and I can actually print those out on my signs and have a QR code that links into my CRM um, and then have an open house app that I'm using at open houses. And the cool thing with this is it's using a smart number, um, so it's not uh, it links to my cell phone, but I also integrated a, uh, an ISA as part of my team. And so they are doing all of my buyer follow-up, my buyer calls, um, and so that way I'm not wasting my time doing just touch points with these buyers where I might have 40 to 100 touch points with different buyers every single day. I'm not doing that, that's off of my task list, that's on to someone else, and I can focus on uh, getting listings and not necessarily booking those buyer appointments. So having a really strong CRM is gonna be essential, but then actually utilizing that CRM, looking at trainings, um, getting guidance from agents that are more advanced than you, or someone who's utilizing some of those tools, and actually start putting in reps. You're not gonna be great the first time around, but just consistently put in reps and uh, learn how to utilize the system so the system can work for you. For us, we recently uh, switched brokers. Um, the first broker that I was at was not offering a CRM or anything like that. So right now we're getting used to the systems that Keller Williams provide for us. Our line of business with a lot of Spanish speaking clients is a little bit difficult. They don't wanna be getting a text from someone else. So it's, um, it's very personal, the business that we do. As we continue to grow, um, that's why Victor and Jeff will be adding uh, to help us to expand to other communities. But with the clients that speak Spanish, just using a system will disconnect to the personal level that we currently have in our business. As I know that's something that we need to kind of move forward to reach other parts of the community, but as right now, that's where we're at. And I don't want to cut the last three of you guys short, but try to make the, your answers too uh, as impactful as yours but just try to like punch it out in just a sentence or two because I have a few speed round things that I think we could add a lot of value to the people that are all sitting here. Um, I definitely think if you guys want to get better at just creating video content because at the end of the day, we need to be focused on short form content. If you guys want to know a little bit more about that, you guys can grab me. Uh, we can chat a little bit after this as well. But short form content after October 12th, I don't know if you guys use any Facebook uh, ads or anything like that, but after October 12th, special ad category ads meaning employment, housing, uh, denying yours, anything that involves fair housing, you won't be able to run any more Facebook ads. So double down on short form content. So one of my apps that I love to use that's free, you can download it right now, it's called CapCut, C-A-P-C-U-T, CapCut. Um, you can edit on there, you can add captions, that's how you use, if you guys go on our social media, you won't be able to see all the nice subtitles, but CapCut and uh, yeah, Short from content. Yeah. Perfect. Thank you, Jim. Um, my CRM is follow up boss. I would be nowhere without it. It reminds me when I have to call someone, it does all my um, auto emails, auto blasts, fills in for everyone, um, makes it sound incredibly personal. The robots work much harder than we do. I promise you that much. And um, yeah, <laughs> that's it. Louisa, did you have one, two? Um, I guess for me, just because I'm more of a visual person, I don't know if you guys use Trello, but I love Trello. I have, especially for my notes, you know, if I have like little things that I need to keep track of just for my contracts or like uh, ideas or whatever, Trello, I will just kind of be able to go in there, create my notes, and just stay organized. Task. Yeah. I, I, I want to say if you're an agent and don't have a CRM available to you, it's okay. Use Facebook, okay? You can create a Facebook group and add all your leads on there, make it a community group where you're bringing value to your, uh, to your clients and even your past clients. Create a VIP client group and that's how you are able to stay in front of them, nurture them, uh, create events. Uh, but Facebook is also treated as a social CRM. I just wrote that down because I'm 100% stealing that. <laughs> uh, okay, the next speed round question was, what was the one best educational tool that you had, whether it's a class, a course, uh, anything in your real estate realm, keep it away from mindset and just real estate related. What was it? Mine was um, PSA certification, uh, Pricing Strategy Advisor. That is incredible. I went to the SFR, RSPS, and PSA. PSA is the best because it goes through um, exactly what it's like, kind of getting in the mind of an appraiser so that you can present that to your listings so that you don't you have a lot less issues coming back and how do you challenge and appraise them properly uh, and all that good stuff. PSA. 
Oh, unless you, you need more time, you can keep going down and come back again. Okay. What was the question? What educational tool, course, whatever, that's strictly real estate related? I'm thinking so much about what he just said, and he said about Facebook that I'm still interested <laughs> We attended Mega Camp for uh, Keller Williams, and that was priceless. I mean, uh, we heard from Gary Keller and a lot of good um, realtors all over the U.S. and um, just kind of reassuring how hard all of us have to work and we don't have this, it doesn't come easy, but learning how an everyday discipline will, um, you know, give you results, but that was very valuable. They have one coming up in February too and we're gonna attend that. It's a lot of learning right now with that new broker. Um, I would say it, whatever trainings that your broker is offering you, those are valuable resources to you. For us, it's attending our EXPCon, not to say KW, I, I, don't know if I got amazing friends at KW, but EXPCon, we just uh, got back from the EXP shareholders. But we get to learn like literally from top team leaders, like the number one team at EXP Global that sold over 2,200 homes last year. Like getting, getting those rooms, become a sponge, but on top of that, make sure that you're also implementing. Because at the end of the day, you can, you can take resources from anywhere, everywhere. You can just go on YouTube University. And, but if you don't implement, nothing's going to change your business. Um, I actually had two, just because, again, I, I focus a lot on not just the business, but I also focus a lot on just my well-being. So for me, it was uh, one of, uh, well, like Gino said, we do have a lot of uh, teams that we kind of like look up to and a lot of, uh, people that you know we're very close to and we're able to surround ourselves in some of the rooms with like big top producers, big coaches, and things like that. Uh, implementation is huge. Uh, so for me, one of them was uh, her name is Gogo. She's out of Michigan, and now she also uh, moved over to Florida. She retired and moved over to Florida. Um, and uh, because I learned a lot of you know how to actually uh, set a foundation for your business, you know. Um, and then the other one was actually I took what's called a performance blueprint uh, and that was for more like a jiu-jitsu, kind of like more like an athlete. But through that I learned a lot of, it was more like a, like a, way, like a, a way of life, you know, like a, uh, where I was able to learn about like filling your cup up, like everything that Gina was just talking about. You know, we, when real estate we go on with our day, we talk to people every day. Uh, so think about yourself as a cup, literally, like if you wake up, you're, you go throughout the day, you're pouring into everyone. You go to sleep, what happens if you, if you don't fill your cup up? You have nothing to pour the next day. So breathing in exercises, um, eating well, uh, you know, um, uh, exercising, all of that, you know, it's all, uh, uh, like I said, it goes into more like the training, but I feel like it goes into everything that we do. It's more of a way of life. And real quick, um, what were the names of those two classes again? Just uh, performance Blueprint, uh, but it, it, that one is more for like, if you're like a jiu-jitsu athlete, uh, but I think, you know, just you can find, you know, different type of like breathing exercises, meditations, all of that, anything that you can kind of find out there, um, those are really good. I can right. always, you know, yeah. share a few with you guys. Yeah, I would second what the, the group here is saying is uh, get to the conventions um, and uh, go to those events because there's going to be great breakout sessions, but there's going to be courses or certificates or um, certifications that are offered as well that are very valuable. But I guess the one thing I would add on top of that is rather than just going and getting a ticket and being part of the masses, actually make a, make a substantial investment in going to those events. Get in the VIP rooms, get in with the executive boards, get in with the people that are on a high level um, and spend time around those people. It's gonna be a different type of conversation out on the general floor with uh, 500 people standing all around you rather than sitting on a couch with the founder of your company, sitting on a couch with the agent that's doing 2,200 transactions a year. And it's gonna be different conversations in that, that separate section and it's gonna be a lot more intimate and you're gonna be able to make connections that you can build your business with long-term. I'm gonna agree with everyone and counter everyone here <laughs> and saying, I still, I will text everyone. Do you have any listing appointments? Can I shadow you? Do you have any buyer consultations? Can I shadow you? And I think just seeing how other agents do business, I mean, at the end of the day, we, how we interact with the people we are either trying to list out their house or sell them a house, 
that's what we really have to master as well. So um, I would I would definitely recommend just shadowing your other agents on their appointments. Yeah, very good. And that's uh, thank you guys for answering all these questions, and uh, we'll open it up to uh, Q and A. And I think that you said it perfectly. Of, like we all fall on that spectrum of like we are both competing and collaborating with all of the agents out here, right? But being able to have a mindset of abundance, not scarcity, being able to collaborate with one another, depending on where you fall on that scale, uh, try to push you more towards the collaborative side. If you know find someone who is collaborative, you know you're going to shadow them. So, okay, great. Uh, general Q and A from anyone out there? Yeah, go ahead. Uh, I have a hello. My name is Ian Carter. I have a question. It's kind of specifically for you, Grace Um Something that you said kind of resonated with me in terms of when you were making your transition going from the banking industry into real estate and saying that you, you know, you understood your community, you knew what your people needed. Um, as you go along this new journey in, in real estate, um, you know, how are you keeping that in the forefront? What are the things that you are kind of running into that have been a hindrance to you? And what are some of the things that you find that are helping you um, deal with the demographic that is sometimes underrepresented, underserved, and undereducated? Mm -hmm. Thank you, Dean. Great question. At first, uh, even though uh, when I was in banking, I refer a lot of business to a lot of lenders, tons of lenders. I consider them my friends, and I get into this, and I'm oh, I'm going to work with them. And I had my first transaction was a hundred thousand um, single woman who wanted to make an investment, and I had no support. No support. That was pretty hard on me. I was like, well, I'm facing the truth over here. I'm sending business to a lot of these people, um, but I'm passionate about who I'm helping, and I found a great lender. Three of them now that I work with them, that they respect my community, they respect the business that is a hundred thousand, and now they get a million, they get nine hundred thousand. So that was hard, just finding the right people to work with. Um, I invest a lot of time in education, and I know as my business grows, I really pray that I will change. But I take time understanding their finances and meeting them. I have clients that were closing now what we met a year ago, and we help them even send a dispute to TransUnion to switch their IT number uh, record to their social security number. So a lot of that is time consuming, and that's when I find the most passion. So as I continue to grow in my team, I know I will come a point where I cannot do that with everyone, but that's why I'm bringing more people. Um, it's just finding the right lenders to help you and lenders who understand the community. If I get a sense that people don't want to take the time, don't want to take the time to educate, I don't want to work with them. And I'm very strict with that. Um, what I offer uh, to clients all the time is that I'm going to guide them with their finances. It's a lot more work than maybe just getting a client who has everything in order, but it's, it's more. Um, it makes me feel better at the end of that because I'm helping them. They're just getting lenders. I'm amazed to the people that step up to say, hey, I'm going to help you. Well, they're getting most of my business because um, they're there. They have a team of uh, assistants that are translating in Google <laughs> Translate, but they, they have the right intentions to help the people that I want to help. Yeah. That's a great answer. Uh, next question. Yes. What have been each of your most successful prospecting avenues? So I guess it expires. I know for you guys it's social media, but how are you guys getting all of your business? I think we should just quick rifle down and just say it's this, 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 and then you can follow up with one of us cool. saying if you yeah. want an example. Sure. Um, yeah, you can go ahead and start. Okay. Um, yeah, I would recommend getting like a core three or four. Um, for my business personally, it's going to be expired for sale by owners. Um, and that is kind of the core basis as well as sphere of influence and repeat clients. How, how do you reach those expireds and um, sell by owners? Yep, so I pull, I pull the MLS data and I upload it into a software. I was using a software called Red X. 
I have now switched over to a system called Vulcan 7. And I pay to get this. What it does is it skip traces all the information. So it gets you the owner's name, it gets um, the property address, has all of that data from the MLS, like the date, the price, the home, um, then provides the mailing address, phone numbers, email addresses, and uh, also includes if it's on the do not call registry or uh, if it is not on the do not call registry, and then it has a dialer built in. And I wanted to put mine in before I bring out real quick for your response. Um, mine is huge on social media. I do a closing post. I tag, I get permission first to tag my clients. And then I friend every single one of the people that, that they comment on and they like it, that is their sphere. And then I have now become the realtor that helps this person. And when they see me post, 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 they come back up to me. I had three or four people this year come up just from a closing post and saying, hey, you helped Anna. Can you help me too? Because I just went, Mm. Friend, 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 friend. I just made 30 connections. All right. Yeah. Okay. Uh, for us, these are the fear of influence. And then uh, Jennifer is great doing a post at the end of the month with all of the closings. And we have clients doing reviews. We were not asking clients for reviews, but they were so happy that they were starting sending the reviews. And some of those posts are like, um, you know, green a lot. All of a sudden, they have 20 or 30, like, I want to be your friend on Facebook. And, People get excited when they see their friends having a house, and how can I obtain that? And we get a lot of phone calls from that. And I'm, I'm sorry to tag in for that, but it, it really sparked something in me, is uh, shifting our mindset completely on creating content is not a job, not a task. That is prospecting. If you do that, if you shift your mindset and think, oh, I don't want to do this, every single time you make a post is now an evergreen thing that's out there that they now can see forever. And instead of knocking on one door, you created one post that everyone will see forever. So posting content is prospecting. Okay. They are uh, pretty much everything that they just mentioned. Uh, we use Vulcan 7 as well to grab uh, expires, fizzbos, uh, farm neighborhoods. Um, but our biggest has always been social media, organic. We've been able to you know, help 120 families all through social media. We never paid for ads or anything of that nature. So. Um, you know, just, just creating a community uh, on Facebook where you're just delivering value um, and adding all your past clients into that group. And uh, you can host raffles, online raffles, giveaways. Um, that's how you are able to start getting a repeat, you know, repeat flow of business uh, coming in. Um, so prospecting, like, like Jacob said, you know, just shift your mindset. Uh, it's not just posting content. You are the content. Just, you know, you guys are all professionals. You guys are all licensed. You're at the WRA. You're, you know, you're educated. So it's just document everything that you're doing. You know, you just get on on Facebook, go on, you know, and just document your everyday. Um, and uh, I think that's that's pretty much it. I think you know you can prospect like Jacob said, add people to your Facebook list. We add all our past clients because uh, at the end of the day, we want to become friends. Where when we work a transaction with every client, we are now family. You're now my brother. You're now my sister, right? Uh, so, you know, just add everyone into your world um, and then your content is going to continue nurturing them. That way you remain top of mind and when that one conversation two years from now comes when you're like, hey, I want to I sell my house and you sold me 